I'm a liar. But before I explain why, you know what I've gotta say. Welcome back to another episode of Will It Race Car. If you're new here, click on the playlist in the top right to catch up with our 24 Hours of Lemons build, a 1964 Plymouth Valiant. For everyone else, here's a quick recap. Last time, we painted our engine bay red and swapped a new 225 cubic inch slant six into it because our previous one was a smoky, gunky mess. If you haven't seen that video yet, make sure you check it out after this one. Now that your memory's been refreshed, let's roll that sweet, sweet intro. No! Now you might be wondering, why are you a liar, Taylor? Well, last time I said that we were going to install a roll cage on this episode, but due to extenuating circumstances, that's not what's happening this time. So what is going down then? Let's have past us in light and present you. All right, so what are you gonna say? I don't know what you're gonna say. I know what I'm gonna say. Okay, though. you say, I couldn't even record the stupid hardware in I know, right? <laughs> <laughs> so if you've been following our series, you know that this thing is a performance monster, which means that we need to swap out this seven and a quarter itty bitty rear end for an eight and three quarter out of my 1969 Roadrunner pile of crap. We're switching out the rear end with this one because we're suckers for pain, baby. So the reason we're putting the eight and three quarter rear end is not that we think that that rear end is going to break from all 43 horsepower, just that this one has a better gear ratio and is a 323 sure grip rear end, which means that it's a limited slip rear end where the one that's in the car is just an open one. It's like the one wheel peel, only one tire turns. And so hopefully this will give us a lot better performance. <laughs> So before we get this thing in the car and make it really, really difficult to do any hard work on it, we're gonna try to get these Drake Brums off. Drake Brums! <laughs> Drake Brums! <laughs> Give it to me! Baby. Oh, oh, oh. Hot. This is not that bad actually, huh? Look at the spiders! Those actually look pretty good, huh? I'm amazed. It's a lot of meat on these still, and there's no crazy grooving or anything in them. Wow. Wow. So, we can take the wheel off the other side. Hey! Oh -ho! I wonder which direction it is. The careful kind. The Rachel. I think we need to replace all these studs anyways, though. Let's break them off! You know what? No. Get hot. I wonder if these wheel cylinders leak. You won't know that until you get it on the car and put pressure. Why would they leak? They're, who knows how old they are and they have rubber seals in the ends. The seals feel great though. Put your finger in that. They feel nice and squishy. Squisha! So would it be foolish to pressure wash the inside? Yes, brake clean. Oh yeah, it's much smarter. It's in the name. After our brakes were all demastified, I used the wrist snapper 2000 to unbolt <laughs> our clapped out shocks and petrified U-bolts. Oh, look at that. Look at how performance friendly. It's like an industrial cow. Gotta milk them udders. Oh. oh, the amount of rust that came off that. Oh. This side's not as rusty. I was we demonstrated our musical prowess and dropped the car to unload and remove the leaf springs. The rear end was now free, so we rolled it over to the new one Gotta back that thing up. and discovered with much joy that these sure look like the same length. So we rolled the eight and three quarter into its new home with much less trouble than expected. Do you want me to push it off? Yeah, 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 sure. Oh, you're just gonna go for it? Yeah, okay. Jesus, graceful. I was so excited about the new rear end that I forgot to change the camera angle. So you'll just have to enjoy some giant subtitles. Mine's in, baby. Mine's in. It fits. Woo -hoo -hoo! Look at that. Dude. Like it was meant to be. That's insane. Shh. Dude. 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 That's insane. I thought this was going to be so much work. Look at that. Boom, sucker. Okay, so we have a dilemma, but luckily it's one I know how to fix. Problem solving with Taylor. <laughs> 
So this is the old spring plate from the Valiant, and when we swap to the eight and three quarter inch from the Roadrunner, this is no longer compatible. So we had to order these new ones for the eight and three quarter, but the downside is, is that they don't come with any shock mounting hardware, because as you can see, this is where the shock mounts on the old spring plate, but this doesn't have that. So luckily I've had to do this before actually on the 68 dart that we have. And the solution is to take a bolt and run it through that. And then to take a piece of tubing that you'll cut off and basically make this little sleeve that sits on top of the bolt. So we'll just cut it off right about there and weld it on. With the shock mount problem addressed, it was time to bolt everything together and install our brand new shocks. We removed the old ones and used some high temperature red grease on the new ones to reduce wear. Only the best for our little Valiant. While I lubed up the shafts, <laughs> Wes acted like an absolute savage. He's like, no, I don't know that, I'm, I'm old. I, and I told him, I was like, I don't want to, I'm not trying to sound like a know-it-all. Yeah. I was like, I have a 23-year-old kid who's, who's a know-it-all. Oh, yeah, bitch! But I told him too, I was like, yeah, but he's working on his master's degree, so he actually is smarter than I am. <laughs> it's not about being smarter. It's about being more assertive, that's all it is. Oh, oh, oh! All right, this is where you panic, cut this wire, and <laughs> miss it. <laughs> you don't panic, it's not that fast. Hold on, hold on, hold on. Well, you're not that fast. Yeah, that's true. Well, I am not that fast. You're gonna have to edit this. <laughs> oh no, hurry, you might miss it. Oh, our grease, bro. Yeah, dip judges here. With how much grease I'm using, the, the lemons judges are gonna be like, bro, that's like 15 bucks in grease. You're over. <laughs> Now that our U-bolts, spring pads, and shocks were installed, the rear end was officially in. But there was still one thing missing. Wheels. And to install those, we needed to replace our wheel studs because the old ones were very rusted. So we've just taken a hammer and beat them out. And we had these new studs here to go into the, the axle here. And a lot of people just put them in and then they just run the nut down with spacers. But they actually make a tool here that actually saves the actual chamfer on the front of the nut there. And so what we're gonna do is we're just gonna take this out of the package, we're gonna put the stud basically in the axle, and then this little piece goes over, and then you just run this down with an impact, and it pulls the stud into the axle, so now we have brand new studs. Sounds like a great plan, right? Well, no. The tool kept coming apart, <laughs> which forced us to repeatedly search for 20 tiny bearings in the proverbial haystack that is our side yard. Here's what Past Taylor has to say about that. This tool is the worst thing I've ever seen. Every single stud we seem to press down, this actually breaks apart, the race comes off of the back, and it spills the bearings everywhere. And it's just frankly not usable. He paid like 20 bucks for this, and I wouldn't pay a single dollar for it. So you see it, they're, they're falling out as we speak. So maybe the old timers who had the washers were really the genius ones, because this sucks. Nevertheless, we continued to use that dung nugget of a tool to install all 10 of our new studs. Here's what we learned in the process. If you're gonna get one of these, you just have to remove like half the bearings and then the race doesn't pop off. It was like, it was just, it was too tight. It was too good for us. And <laughs> it worked all the way up until the end and nothing got wrecked. If you are gonna do it with this tool though, you need like five extra lug nuts because we used every single extra we had, but it works and we have all the lug nuts we need, so we're good. Stud strife over, we tossed some temporary rims and tires on the car and admired its new beefy stance. And with that, we were finished with the rear end swap. Thank you so much for coming on this journey with us. Next episode, we'll be making some custom seat mounts for our Lemons approved one piece aluminum race seats. If you laughed while watching this video, do me a favor and click that like button. It costs you nothing, but it means the world to us.
See you next time. And as always, you are awesome.